I'm Buck Paulson. You remember me from Painting with Paulson on public television. I am here today to talk to you about composition, and I think you will enjoy the trip. Composition, what I mean by that is how you place the items in a picture, whether it's still life, florals, or landscapes. We're going to may, uh, deal with a couple subjects. What I want you to look at first, on the easel is what I call golden sunset. And this one, I went out and I was driving along and saw it painted mainly from memory. So the composition was very simply making a nice lyre shape like this, what they call the instrument, L-Y-R-E, over in here. The old masters used that. And then your center of interest is in the middle of that. And you got the bulk on one side, and then you have a little less on this side. And then, of course, uh, composition-like, you want to have this come down and smash against there. Light travels in a straight line, straight line to the viewer. I once painted a small figure on an ocean scene and had the light coming down to that person. And it's not so. It's not so. The light comes to the viewer. Okay, on the uh, easel here, we have another composition, Path to Discovery. You see the nice little path. You see the tree sort of bending here. This one a little straighter. This bending one helps you give just a little flow. And again, the, the bulk of the uh, strength is on this side and then the distance back there. Let me bring up a couple more paintings. This is another nice little one. It's got the, the uh, largeness or the bulk on the left side and then you come around to the right side. In itself, it's very lovely. But then when you add all the little dimensions of color to it, sure looks good. And to see, you have that in a nice sunset, but the, the middle was a little blank, but adding just the smallest little figure makes it possible where you feel what she's feeling as she looks at the scene. Let's take these down and put up another one. I love the ocean. And the power in this, you get the movement going this way and you get that strong rocks against it. And then you have the nice contrast right there. You have the waves splashing up across the line, which kind of breaks the horizon line. And then we'll give you one more. This is a floral and it as well, you have a nice loose feeling, a lot of color. You can kind of see a little distance. You actually don't see anything out there except a suggestion of a cloud. Now let me uh, do one thing and, and you watch the difference. If I take away that highlight on the vase, then it's kind of flip floppy all over, but that holds it. So your center of interest is right near that flower, this highlight, and the dark bookends with the leaves. So that, that's quite helpful to do. Now let's go ahead, let's see, I think what I want to do next is to show you on a canvas where we have um, clouds blocked in there. Now to make a nice composition out of it, let's go ahead and take a little color. So I have a fan brush, I'm picking up a little green, little Van Dyke Brown, and you're, I need to ask myself, what do I want? What size trees? I could have a large one or I could have a small one. I think I'll go small first. And then if I need to go larger, I'll go larger. Look at the loose ends too that you have in the trees. Go a little taller on this side. Okay, and then as I come across, I'll kind of skip a little bit, maybe put a little over here, not quite as much height or quite as much dark. But I do feel I better go a little higher on the left side so that I'm closer to that cloud because compositionally, you want to have a center of interest and that definitely will make it such. And after you do that, then I realize that what might be a little more helpful is if that cloud, the light on the cloud, see we have it up there, let's bring it down closer to the trees.
and I'll take a brush and blend that just a little bit. Notice when I, when I have the, that tree against the, the clouds, it's not a real sharpness. You, you want to feel like that uh, is just airy. When you're, when you're looking at that, you, you don't want any hardness to confuse you. I'm bringing this down just a little bit more to go with what we have there. And I'll push in just slightly there. Watch what happens when I do that. You get this feeling of flow, don't you? Now, let's do something else. Let's take uh, a little, what are you, raw sienna? And just a little bit of the Van Dyke brown and white. And we'll just suggest a small path. That's a little too light, so we'll just add a little dark, and then we'll put some shades of uh, light into it. See, I'm having this go just a little from the side, a little from the side back there. And of course, with perspective, which we spoke about at one time, is that um, this needs to be a little more narrow back there. So it's more narrow there and a little stronger as we come out here. Stronger, which means both lighter and larger. Just a little bit again, right down there. Boy, that's bright. But I like it. And then on the table, a table, I mean the foreground, we'll have just a little bit. This is a road that is right there and it goes back to that. Okay, we'll blend slightly and then let's see what we have. Push up just a little bit there. And here's another thing. See, you kind of want to steer people along the path. So right now you say, oh, you're right there. But watch what happens when I just darken this a little bit. Keep wanting to get a little darker, darker. You're too dark. But that gives me an entrance, entrance to the path. And we'll narrow that a little bit. And by having that lighter back there, you definitely go back to that. Possibly a little stronger on the, the dark tree there. Then what's always kind of nice too, if you take, and I'll take a little blue and white, you have this nice tree, but if you have just a little specks of uh, see-through, some of the sky is showing through. Then it loosens up that tree a little bit and it isn't just a blob. A little bit over in here. So I think that gives you an idea of how we uh, take and work with the composition. The idea of how do you place things? How do you have a center of interest? How do you lead to that center of interest in a you know, kind of a systematic way? Oh, we don't have a lot of time, but oh, we, we just need to do this. We need to have somebody that's just walking along that path, don't we? And that could be developed. See, when you're first putting that on, you think, do we, we want that? And I'm saying, yes, I want it, but I won't have the time to develop it quite as much as it needs to be. And we might even put a little dog down next to it. But, that gives you the kind of idea of how we go ahead with a composition. And I hope you'll consider your placement of things when you do your paintings or drawings. Bye-bye. This program is funded by the North Dakota Council on the Arts. The Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public. <laughs>